In the last section, we were talking about creational design patterns, while in the next two sections, our focus is going to be on structural design patterns. I just want to say two notes. Creational was about the creation of classes or objects, such as the singleton, as we've met previously. While contrary to that, structural design patterns are really intended for structures that exist or ideas of, of fundamental ideas of how to build structures. A lot of cases, it's about how to change structures and how to interact with structures so they'll work with one another. You're going to really get this throughout the next two sections. Now, in this section, in part one, we're going to be talking a lot about abstraction and is going to be the main topic of this lecture. We're going to also learn about the adapter design pattern, the composite design pattern, and even the decorator design pattern. So let's get started with abstraction. We're going to go ahead and abstract our singleton and try to find out there what are the things that could be abstracted and why would we want to abstract them. And in that note, I just want to say a few things that although abstraction is key to making flexible designs, it does not mean that everything needs to be always flexible. And it's really a matter of cost a lot of time because making everything flexible takes a lot more development time. So really, not everything needs to be planned in advance which is another kind of core belief that I have when you're going down to programming large infrastructures is create a, a solid shell and as you're growing adopt that structure because end of the day a lot of times what happens is you over plan over build and then end up needing to change a lot of stuff which happens often when the client has a change of heart so instead of over planning start building and then modularly update your content and make it more flexible according to need to fit the changes that are happening. Unless you know exactly the build that you need to create, which is not very common. And then obviously you could then decide in advance how flexible you want your structure to be. But in most cases, you're going to choose that flexibility as you're developing, as you're going along, just as we are doing and as we're going to do in the next two sections. So with that said, let's jump right into it and let's take a look at abstracting our singleton to get us ready to create the next design patterns that we're planning to do in this section. Our sample code is continuing to grow and before we actually move into the design pattern of now, which is the adapter design pattern, before we move into the design pattern, what I, this design pattern, the adapter, I want to go into our singleton, the circle generator singleton. And I want to extract out some of the functionalities. For one, the circle factory is great because it is abstract. But the registration of what circles is kind of not appropriate for this container because we want to be able to add different types of circle builders or things that are not even circles. For that matter, let's go ahead and do some small changes in our interface. I'm going to change the circle factory name to shape factory. So let me just go ahead there because we don't really care if it's a circle or not at this stage, it's going to be a shape. Once it's a shape, let's go ahead there and also update inside of our singleton that we're approaching a shape factory. And I'm just gonna go ahead here and just change it to be SF and just scroll down here, find all spots where I'm actually approaching it and they were all changed, beautiful. The next step that I really want to do is I want to go ahead and move these registrations outside of the initialization process. So let me just go ahead here and I'm just going to take it out of the initialization, automatic initialization. And instead of that, what I really want to do is I want to create basically a function that would register new factory elements or register new shapes for that matter. So let's think about a good name for that. We really want to register items. So I'm going to register instances or register shape so we're going to register shapes this way the first property that we're going to send into the registration is going to be a name and the next is going to be a class all that's left for me to do is take advantage of this sf builder that i already have here and just go ahead and send the name and send the class through now, what this did is it enabled me to take out this logic set and take this registration process from out of this register shape configuration. All that's really left for me to do is to add that into the public interface. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to call this register. And I'm going to go ahead and call the register shape. Adding into my global interface. All that's left for me to do is to basically register the items whenever I need them. So let's say if I'm down right here, this is really where I want to register those items. 
and that's happening as soon as the document is loaded, making it easy for me to use the same interface for other applications, but using different builders for them, if I wanted to, without needing to revisit that initial interface again. So I'm going to go ahead here and just uh, instantiate my singleton a lot earlier now, because really this is just for the sake of presentation. And I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to register and register those two items. Now I don't need to reconfigure that singleton again because it's already going to be available throughout the methods that are living within the ready. So CG should be ready all over. So, you know, and, and a good name would probably to rename the circle generator singleton as well, but I'm going to leave that for you. Now, the next step that I want to do, and this is going to really be the preparation work for us for the next lecture. What I want to do is I want to go back into this interface. And by the way, let, let's just test everything out. So if I go back into my browser, click on refresh, hopefully everything should continue working. And it seems like it is beautiful. Everything is still working. So let's continue it abstracting our circle generator singleton. The next item that we would love to abstract here is going to be our stage itself. Now the stage itself is really critical for us to basically have a stage, right? But our problem right now is that we're relying on jQuery absolutely. And what if we want to use the same circle generator singleton in the future, maybe for Canvas or for another interpretation, or maybe we just don't want to use jQuery in the future. Maybe we want to use another interface or maybe we want to use something native to cut down our file size. We really don't want to need to revisit the circle generator singleton more than once. To be able to do that, what we want to do is we want to abstract this logic wherever we're using the stage itself. So to do that, in theory, what we would love to do is have some sort of a stage that will be able to remove and add elements without needing to know exactly how it's doing it. To be able to do that, we're going to have to basically leave this variable first undefined initially and add another method that will enable us to set a stage function set stage. And the set stage would accept an interface, so it's going to be an accept a stage. And all it's really going to do is it's going to just go ahead there and register our stage with a stage. Now, the problem with doing this step is that if we never set the stage, our application wouldn't work anymore. So if we try to run it and we would run it as trying to add stage elements, then we'd get an error because the stage is not defined. So we definitely would have to add here some logic if we're really building out an application to kind of highlight and say, whoa, whoa, you must set your stage first. But I'm going to go ahead and ignore that and just add another set stage method, making it public. Now that my set stage is public, I could go down into my ready document. Once I registered the builders, I'm going to go ahead and also register our um, set stage. And what is our stage that we want to register? It was actually our advert stage, I believe it was our advert. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to send in for now our stage. Now, the step that I've just done here on its own already enabled me to make a modification that enabled me to then work with this implementation using jQuery without the, the content itself being contextually aware that we're using jQuery. Although we are using a signature that is very uh, commonly used in jQuery, such as stage append. But if we were going to create something with a completely different interface, we could then go ahead and then change it and uh, use it according to whatever we want. So we could create a sig we could create basically a wrapper that would then be sent in instead of the creation process where we're sending in the advert through the set stage. Once this advert is set and the stage is set, it's now going to be very easy for me to change my stage and redefine what is my stage. In this lecture, we focus on abstraction to prepare the groundwork for our next design pattern, which is going to be the adopter, which you'll see in the next lecture.